Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Jeff and Lauren. As always, we're here to answer your questions about the double bass. So if you have any or you have any comments or feedback, join us in the comment section below this video. Um, now today, Lauren's going to be um, answering a question that was just emailed over to her and we were having a discussion about um, about the topic and she told me it was the best thing that she's ever done to help her playing was basically addressing this topic so I was like I need to know about it we're gonna have to get Lauren reading the questions out so what was the question and who was it from okay it's from a, a guy named Andrew who is actually either at UNT right now or a UNT alum oh, nice. and he says um, I'm wondering what you do to keep your arms in shape because my arms have been pretty terrible recently. Mm. Um, I was resting to see how my body would react and a new spot, spot in my left arm came up. Mm. And I think what he's asking essentially, uh, because I've absolutely had this problem is, you know, when you're holding your instrument and you're playing, you know, your, your arms aren't obviously resting by mm. your side. You've got them up like this. And then there's a lot of strength that comes with playing the bass, even though we talk a lot about using weight rather than pressure. So um, when I, I remember that when I first started amping up my practicing, you know, and I, I started practicing for longer periods of time, my shoulder right here or my shoulder muscle right here would start to hurt in my left arm. And then same with my right arm. And then I would have some issues in my back and, and that kind of thing. And over time, you know, the more that I practiced it, it got better. I mean, in the same way, you know, that if your fingers are sore after a long time of not playing, mm. you just keep doing it, it kind of resolves itself. Um, but then about five or six years ago, I started um, strength training. And, you know, I was doing uh, body weight exercise, I was lifting weights, I was doing yoga, I was running, and my arms were not happy with me at first. Mm. But, um, you know, that was just kind of a transitionary period for me. And a lot of people, of course, we'll experience that. But the best thing that I ever did for my playing was to continue doing that strength training and, you know, things like yoga and cardio, all of that kind of stuff has been so beneficial to my playing. And I love anything fitness related. I mm. do just about anything I can possibly get my hands on. And um, there, there's been a lot of different benefits that I've had. You know, the, the first one is just being aware of your body. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like lifting and strength training, I think a lot of musicians are understandably nervous about starting. And you do have to be careful, but, you know, you have to be careful no matter what your um, occupation is. I mean, we do have to be a little bit more careful of, you know, our fingers and, mm. and arms, everything, but you can do it in a safe way. And just, you know, understanding like the way that my body could move and being more aware of what was going on when I was moving. Um, you know, it, I started with P90X, and so a lot mm. of times the uh, the guy that leads it is a guy named so Tony this is, Horton. For people who don't know, this is uh, like a DVD training yes, thing, you. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's essentially a way for people to sort of get into strength training and, and um, that kind of exercising. And so the guy that leads the videos, mm. Tony Horton, always – you know, will remind you, you know, make sure you're not clenching your face or um, tensing your back, that kind of thing. And so it just made me a lot more aware of what my body was doing. And also, you know, healthy ways to push my body and move my body. Um, so, you know, that helped me in turn understand what was a good kind of pain, not a good, I mean, no hmm. pain is good, but um, what was an okay kind of pain and what was, what was not. And so, you know, with strength training and yoga, that was really great. And also just knowing what my body was capable of. And then with cardio, I mean, I was a huge, huge runner up until um, <clears throat> about a year ago when I unfortunately injured my knee. But um, I still love to do as much cardio as I can. And it's great for just, you know, calming you down. I mean, going for a morning run or any kind of cardio now that I can't run is still like a huge part of my performance day routine because it just calms me down and a lot of people understandably don't like running but mm. it was just a way for me to just kind of relax and just focus on what I had to do and have some alone time to mm. myself. So. 
So. Well, that sounds amazing, Lauren. I've I've really struggled with fitness my whole life, really, where I go through phases of of being of overeating and then phases of doing exercise and then not doing exercise. Yeah. And mm-hmm. earlier this For year, sure. I did a 10K because I set myself that as a goal in yeah, January. Yeah. And then since then, I've just been really bad, if I'm honest. And it's it's really cold here in the UK. I've been moving around a bit. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I'm not a member yeah. of the gym that I'm normally a member of. And and it's, so it's hard to get out and go running in the rain and what have you. Um, but there's, it's no excuse because I, there's plenty of things that I can do. It's not like there isn't a you know opportunities there yeah but I've always had neck and shoulder pain uh on my right Right. side my right shoulder and my uh going down from my neck and I've seen a lot of uh different kind of healthcare professionals this year looking into it and one of the things that's come back a lot is the the lack of core strength that I have and that I'm probably and I had somebody come and watch me play Mm -hmm. um and give advice about what I was doing and they were Mm -hmm. saying that essentially I wasn't um I was kind of holding my head with my neck and my arms uh, up like this, but I I wasn't supporting myself with any core strength. Uh, And I was kind of slouched in the chair Mm -hmm. and then all Mm -hmm. the, uh, all the strength and the muscles are trying. And so essentially I'm overusing these, these, these uh, neck and, uh, you know, and arm muscles and shoulder muscles. And it's one of my things for this year for 2017 is to really address that and sort it out because I'm convinced that that's at the core of of the problems that I've got. And I've never really, you know, we're doing we're doing something that is really really physical playing the double bass, right? And right. and yeah, you don't have to. It's not. I mean, any instrument is the same. If I was playing violin, it would be the same. It would be the same with guitar. Right. It's you know, double bass isn't a harder instrument as such, but it's a big instrument, and you need to think carefully about what you're doing. And if you well, yeah, and I, you know, just to, sorry to butt in like this, but I do think it is um, not necessarily more difficult in terms of um, you know getting around. Well. I'm just going to say this. Yeah. I think that it is more difficult to get around and maneuver. It's a lot more physical. And yeah. there's so many different variables. You know, how tall you are, how short you are, how wide your shoulders are. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the, another thing that I learned was if you want to improve on a certain exercise, then do other exercises that use that same muscle group. And yes. then, you know, rather than just trying to like, like one of my big goals for this year was to be able to do one one handed push up and I can do two really? now. And because of that, you know, I learned the, the muscles that I was using and I just really focused on, you know, instead of just trying to like hammer down as many as I could and failing, yeah. I, I built up the muscle that, you know, you use when you do that and then that in turn helped. And I think it's the same with playing. You know, you can just sit and try to force yourself to relax or force yourself to, you know, use your core and whatever. But, you know, maybe a better thing for you, and I think it is, would be to work on core strength, work on, you know, you know, loosening up your shoulders, working on. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people talk about stretching before they play. And I'm really on the fence about that because I, I, you know, there's a lot of argument about stretching when you're cold. I Mm. don't respond well to that. What I respond well to is, is getting my body moving and, you know, getting warm, like moving around, moving my body and then, you know, stretching and I feel more flexible, not just waking up or coming to the base, stretching and then. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. I think definitely think about getting the blood moving through, you know, uh, your body first rather than just immediately going for the stretch. Yeah, Yeah. I definitely try to, uh, uh, to take that on board. And I think like, you know, your point about, uh about the bass and and how hard it is it's like if we if we play it badly we can make it hard we can make it really challenging for ourselves <laughs> yeah, and true. you know badly set up instruments can compound it and things but it um you know with a bit of kind of care that you know we shouldn't we should be able to you know have a life of playing great music really without any pain and stuff so anyway i'll let you know right. how i get on later in the year with this but hopefully <laughs> I'll, I'll get on top of it and it's great yeah. to hear that you're doing one-handed push-ups lauren um and it's been inspiring for me we were having this conversation about um you know a, a, about Lauren's advice to Andrew um and I just thought yeah this is like you know you're giving the advice to me so yeah I'll definitely take that on board and uh so yeah thanks for that and thanks of course to Andrew for your question um and let us know your thoughts because I mean pretty much every bass player that I know has had some kind of you know muscle pain or something at some point so let us know let us know what you think and join us in the comments and uh yeah thanks for that Lauren and we'll see everyone next time